To support and guide the development of the student's communication, it's best that everyone interacting with the student works together as a team to identify how the student communicates and what strategies can be consistently used to help them develop this communication. The printed manual contains suggestions and examples of exactly how to bring together and record details of how the student communicates, what these behaviours might mean, and suggested ways of responding to them. To encourage the student to develop their ability to communicate, it's important to create opportunities for them to do this, and a very good way is to identify activities which they like. During the activity, as often as possible, imitate what the student does by matching their sounds or actions. Stop when they stop and resume when they resume. When interacting with a student, go slowly and wait to give the child time to process what they are receiving and organise their response. When beginning an activity, think about how to approach the child. From the front and at their level usually works well, followed by making contact with the touch and saying the child's name followed by your name. To let them know the coming activity, there are many types of cues which we'll look at in more detail shortly. And any cues should be accompanied by voice cues describing what is about to happen. And do some lovely swinging. During the activity, carry out the sequence of steps in the same way each time. Okay, let's do it. Hold on. Ooh. Bit tricky. Over time, the student will begin to learn the sequence and start participating. Oh, well done, good boy. Oh, good boy. A good way to encourage the student to communicate after starting an activity is to pause and carefully observe any actions which might indicate that they want to continue. Yes. Let's go. Even if their action was not originally intended to mean more, by consistently treating it this way can add that meaning to the student's vocabulary. To let the child know clearly that an activity is finished, use a touch cue such as wiggling the child's thumb whilst clearly saying finished. It's a good idea to create activity specific areas so that the student can make an association between an activity and the location. This will help the student recognise and anticipate the activity. Be aware of the student's level of alertness. If the student is feeling drowsy, tired or unwell, concentrating and participating in an activity will be difficult. So plan ahead and schedule activities at times of the day when the student is most alert. Remember to adjust the length of the activity according to the student's ability to stay alert, focused and engaged. As we mentioned, there are a range of cues that can help tell the child which activity is about to happen. The appropriate cue should be selected based on how the student responds. All cues should also be accompanied with the spoken word. Speech cues also include features that are paired with the spoken message. They affect the way something is said and provide further meaning to the student. They include expression, volume, facial expression and speed of the spoken message. Sound cues are environmental sounds that are either naturally made or can be made by the activity items to get the student's attention and inform them on what is about to happen. When selecting an auditory cue, Consider the student's hearing ability. An object cue is an object that can be used to represent people, places and activities. 
They can be given to the student to see, touch and hold to inform them that something is about to happen. Here are some more examples. We have a range of tactile cues. Now this is the tappet table. So we have the tactile and the visual. This is to represent a bus strap and we're going to be strapped into our seatbelt on the bus. And this is the school bus. This is when we're going to do some music, a musical activity. So we're listening to the music and we, the children get to feel our tactile cues and they also see what we're about to do. A touch cue involves touching the student in a specific way on their body to get their attention, inform them of what is going to happen next and provide feedback. As with all cues, the important thing is to use them consistently to help reinforce the association between the cue and the forthcoming activity. Smell cues are smells that are associated with activities, objects and people. They can be used to let the student know what is about to happen and what they are being offered. Movement cues inform the student of the motions that are related to an activity. These cues are used especially when handling, positioning and moving the student in certain ways to help the student associate the movement with the upcoming activity. Gestures are commonly used body and facial expressions that mimic an action or the shape of an object. These movements can be used to provide information to the student about a variety of places, activities, objects, people and actions. For a student with little or no vision, the communication partner can present the gesture on the student's body. Once the student learns to pair a gesture with its meaning, they can begin to anticipate what is going to happen next and produce the appropriate response. Consistent patterns of interaction, routines and opportunities to communicate help the student feel calm, safe and alert. This is the key to learning and promoting the student's independence.